This course addresses the issue of teachers getting better at teaching using a specific technique called reflective practice. Almost by definition, reflective practice requires um, a model of what good teaching is. Now, the one we use is from a uh, book I wrote, 2007 Carlton Science of Teaching. And at one level, it's nine what we call design questions. You know, when you're planning a unit, what about this, and what about this, and what about this, and what about this? You know, that it sparks some ideas. And uh, the three categories are lesson segments involving routines, lesson segments addressing content, and lesson segments enacted on the spot. Uh, design question number one, what will I do to establish, communicate learning goals, track student progress, and celebrate success? Pretty standard fare. What will I do to establish and communicate uh, classroom rules and procedures? What will I do to help students interact with new knowledge? What will I do to help students practice and deepen their understanding of new knowledge? And what will I do to help students generate and test hypotheses about new knowledge? Early in my career, my reflecting was basic journal writing. This workshop provided um, different strategies that I can directly take back and use tomorrow in my classroom. As a result of taking this course, participants will come away with, first of all, an understanding of what reflective practice is. More importantly, they will have gone through the reflective practice process. They will actually have conducted a self-audit to identify their areas of strength and their areas of weakness, and then pick an area or two of weakness and identify specific growth goals using a very specific scale. They'll be able to say by the end of the semester, end of the year, I want to go from this level where I'm at now to this level, actually have an action plan for doing that, and should see growth in their pedagogical skill over time. My growth goal is to help students deepen their understanding of a particular area of knowledge. Once you set your growth goals, uh, you engage in focused practice. Eight. Eight? Tell me about your thinking. Can you lay your dice down on the carpet so we can see what you got? Tell me how you got eight. Seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> this is going to sound like a strange question. Well, she missed it. Why didn't you just say no? Because I wanted her to think it through, and I wanted her to, to figure it out. OK. Did that happen? It did. Yeah, let's see. What's your thinking now? Seven. Seven? How did you get seven? Tell me your thinking. If I were king for the day, I usually say uh, at least once a year, every teacher should have the chance to go on rounds. And that is instructional rounds, at least once a year, ideally twice a year. How many remember peer coaching? Peer coaching? So we call it coaching colleagues, and it's a slightly different, it's a slightly different tone. It's been very beneficial, um, just hearing um, some constructive criticism. And also, I think teaching can be a very thankless profession, and it's nice sometimes when somebody says, this is something that I saw that's really great in your classroom. Yeah. This course uniquely addresses the issue of reflective practice because of its specificity. Now my reflection is much more intentional. I love the frameworks that we've been given with the different design questions and then the different elements within that. It's just totally changed my teaching. Everything I do now has a purpose and I can talk about why I do that and how it's effective for the kids. If I'm reflecting on myself and constantly growing, I'm going to be more excited about what I'm teaching and the strategies that I'm using in the class and the kids will sense that and, and be more excited hopefully to be in, be in my class and be learning.